kind of reminds me of when you've got a piece of information on the tip of your tongue, but you just can't quite recall it. And it's only when you release yourself back into fully engaging with whatever you're doing that the mind is allowed to go about its business and present you with exactly what it is you've been asking for. Opening up and speaking honestly about what you're really feeling can definitely be a challenge. It's not something that society or necessarily many communities have been able to facilitate no matter how hard everyone's trying. Sometimes it just doesn't feel right to leave it all out then. Being a sportsman in what is quite a macho world where image definitely comes first or seems to come first, it feels like that's an extra locked door to pick in this case too. The changing room environment often prided itself upon showing no weakness, putting on the right face, saying the correct words, just doing everything that was expected of you. And as a result, I feel that too much of the time it became about just getting through stuff, surviving what were incredibly blessed opportunities, instead of engaging in them and making them truly, truly worthwhile. The energy of the change room could be tense, that's for sure. And sometimes it was powerful, inspiring, and sometimes it was powerfully debilitating too. So it was an absolute pleasure to have a full and open discussion about human potential with my guest this week, Joe Van Niekerk. Joe, as a 52-time Springbok international rugby player, served as a big adversary to me. But later on, as a back row forward for the French club Toulon, he became an immense teammate and a real guiding force for me. What's certain now, he's a friend for life. We didn't know just how difficult we were both finding the worlds we were living in at the time. And little did we know either just how much we had in common, how maybe we could have perhaps supported each other a bit more. In this podcast, we finally got to talk about the real stuff, where we are right now, what we care about, what we think really matters, what worked for us in those rugby days, what definitely didn't, and the more conscious understanding I think we both possess now for the roles we played in it all, the helpful and the unhelpful. Talking and sharing definitely can be a beautiful thing. Towards the end of our playing careers together down in the south of France, Joe, our inspirational captain and mesmerizingly positive leader, had fallen not out of form, but just out of favor with the coaching team. And for the final six months of his time there, he just wasn't being selected. He's finding it so difficult to get out on the field. There wasn't much he could do. And the situation set off a big reaction in him that sent him reeling emotionally and mentally. He'll talk a lot about this in the podcast. It was the trigger for a big transformation. For me, towards the end of that playing career, instead of kind of being the victim of that situation, becoming the victim of that situation and looking at it as, how could I turn this in my favor in the sense that I could accept where I was at that moment or I could resist? And so the acceptance, I think, was a big thing for me in that process. Leaving the game and entering the unknown is challenge enough. But Joe endured an additional component when it all ended in such a bittersweet way for him. He watched the team, arguably his team, go on to achieve an unprecedented European Cup and league double. And he watched it all from the sidelines. It was the catalyst he needed, I think, for an inward turn and the motivation to question deeper and explore further than he'd ever done up to that point. At the core of his struggles, He's discovered how his attachment to his achievements, the need to compete, to compare, to feature in the thoughts and feelings of others left him stranded when things didn't quite go as planned. The ability to embrace the good, to celebrate the victories, and then most importantly, let them all go is something he now actively practices. For so long, you kind of like built up this image, the construct of where you've been, what you've done, all of these things. And it kind of like builds this like really strong ego. And that, if anything, the last seven years, eight years of doing some of the deeper work, inner work, I've seen that the peace lies in us actually dissolving that. And it's a hard point to accept because we've been doing this for so long. And as you would probably concur, is like this realization comes along, how important are all of these things and all those accolades, all those achievements, you know, for most of our lives, we've been trained and programmed to believe that this is what I need to do. And all of that striving to win things is, is a beautiful process. 
and it's wonderful. But how many other sports men and women have we spoken to when they come to the end of their careers, they feel like they've won everything, but they feel like there's something still, there's a void that hasn't been fulfilled. And what is that? Why, why are they feeling that way? I can really resonate with Joe. My journey too has been a tale of two halves. The first half was all about trying to fill the hole within and solve that sense of not being enough with trophies, with respect, with adoration, with all the types of achievement that Joe describes perfectly. The halftime whistle for me came about in the form of an insurmountable crisis moment, one of many, but this one big enough for me to realize that perhaps this type of approach just wasn't working and that it had never worked. And really it was never going to. Now I had the energy I needed to, to do something about it. I realized that everything I was desperate for, what I was doing, wasn't going to bring it about. And then a change of ends. The second half of this path has been about filling that same hole, but from the inside out rather than from the outside in. And yet it can sometimes seem like I'm playing up the slope and into the wind, but it also can feel like I've got the whole universe behind me, guiding me forward. Each challenge has become an opportunity to transcend old reactions and resistance, to shed barriers rather than attempt to keep reinforcing them and gathering more value from old ideas. What I'm finding is though, that I already seem to have what it is I'm looking for, only if I allow for long enough. It's almost as if what I require is something I already know, but have simply forgotten. The process of unlocking this potential is the effortless trusting version of simply remembering it. it. Kind of reminds me of when you've got a piece of information on the tip of your tongue, but you just can't quite recall it. And it's only when you release yourself back into fully engaging with whatever you're doing that the mind is allowed to go about its business and present you with exactly what it is you've been asking for. And this shift in the relationship with challenge is huge for me. I think it's like anything, Wilco, you know, like, you know, belief is such a powerful gift that we have. And, and you more than anyone would relate to that because the belief in yourself, the belief to transcend, the belief, like we've got all these beliefs that we carry and that we reinforce with just through our thought processes. We, we give that attention, we give that energy, and then it just, it just keeps reinforcing that thing. And so I think the same can be said when we listen into our inner guidance to our high intelligence is that the more that we listen in, the more we trust that, the more we reinforce. It's definitely a path of vulnerability and of humility. Make no mistake about that. And this is a constant theme behind so much of what my guest has to say. You can sense his playfulness now during the podcast and also his gratitude for everything and everyone. We discuss how when stuck and attached to our achievements, how the threat of humiliation lingers at the core of our thought processes and how we long to control away all the possibility, the beauty and the potential that exists in the unknown. If only we could make friends with it instead. I think what you mentioned there is so interesting and because it's like this humiliation and kind of when we get to those team videos, as you mentioned, like what the driving factor behind when you see yourself making that error or that mistake and the rest of your buddies see it. And it's kind of like, oh, wow, it's like putting you on the spot, you know? But then again, like who is it putting on the spot in that situation, you know? And so it's really, yeah, I can re definitely relate to that. And then also, this thing that I've seen, brother, is about this letting go. And one beautiful Buddhist lama, he came here to the valley and he spoke about the three reasons for suffering. And one of them was attachment, one of them was anger, and one of them, so it's attachment, anger, and ignorance. So those three. That first half of my journey that I described earlier was one of attempting to become someone to separate myself out, to stand out, to become noticed, to become something special. And when I was first able to recognize just how much I was suffering this kind of self-importance, how destructive it was becoming to everything in my world that I held dear and how counterproductive it was becoming, 
to everything that I wanted, it really kicked off the second half. The second half of that journey was all about rediscovering and is all about rediscovering my nobodiness. It's about rediscovering the experience of being in the zone and recognizing that this is something we are, definitely not something we can try and do. I almost feel like when you're in the zone is not much mind, you know, it's more instinctual. It's like, I'm just in the flow. I'm at the right place at the exact right time. And the more that I get into the zone in that way, the more the things happen for you, you know, and I feel like that was definitely what would happen is all the circumstances, all the conditions were just perfect. The environment, the team you were playing, everything that led you up until that exact point. And I can remember a few moments like that where everything just seemed to be completely aligned and everything would be going your way. (laughs) For some of you that have been wanting to hear a bit more about the rugby stories, then there's one or two in there for you but they are, in my eyes, perfectly translatable to all life experiences too. Joe happily gives away the secret to his legendary captain team talks. He offers his take on why we end up feeling isolated and stressed, and he shares his own tools too for how we can move beyond old habits and limitations into incredibly exciting and unimaginable new space. We also talk health and well-being versus fitness, which is really interesting because something we don't really discuss during the chat is that Joe owns and lives on Rama Organica, an organic farm in Costa Rica where he cultivates and lives off the land. And he also invites people to come and enjoy spiritual retreats there. From a physical standpoint, Joe may well be a bit different to his professional rugby days, having adapted himself to align and flow more easily with his new environment and his aspirations. His hair's long, he's definitely not so bulky anymore. But so much may have evolved in him on a mental and emotional level. But what remains completely untouched is that incredible energy, that passion and that heart that he's worn on his sleeve for so much in a rugby shirt. The connection we have between us is one forged from years of trials and tribulations, highs and lows, but also plenty of laughing. The conversation may come across as a touch more familiar, therefore, than some of the others, because I can't help but chuckle away in his presence. But I hope you can enjoy this conversation the same way I did and take something from it, whatever it is that you need. Joe's an awesome guy. He was mighty powerful on the field and he's even more powerful, in my opinion, now off it, exploring new and uncharted terrain. I'm Johnny Wilkinson. This is the I Am Podcast with Joe Van Nico. Thank you so much for listening to today's Tuesday episode of I Am. The Tuesday drops are definitely a space for me to reflect on the interviews to come and set the scene a little. And hopefully I've done this for you and you're now very excited to listen. The full episode will follow in a couple of days, so keep your ear out for it. As always, I really want this to be a two-way conversation. So if you've got any questions, just pop a review in the review section on Apple Podcasts or contact me through my social channels. I would love to hear from you. Until then, I'm Johnny Wilkinson and this is I Am. Thank you.